cellular devices on silence or turning them off during today's event. Welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. My name is Jennifer Sanchez and I am the Kerr County Assistant Veteran Services Officer. We're here today to honor our heroes, to remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication, and to say thank you for their sacrifices. I'm honored to introduce our MC for today's ceremony, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, Mr. Jeff Harris. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody in attendance today, including our elected officials, our veterans, family members, and all of our friends who support our veterans. For countless families across the nation, Memorial Day is a painful reminder for those who have never been afforded the opportunity or been honored as veterans for their service to our country. Their sacrifice is a true expression of selfless service no one would like to pick for themselves. There was a poem that was written by World War I Colonel John McRae, a surgeon with Canada's 1st Brigade, Brigade Artillery. It expresses McRae's grief over the row of row and rows of graves of soldiers who died on Flanders battlefields. Located in the region west of Western Belgium and Northern France, the poem presented a striking image of the bright red flowers blooming among the rows of white crosses and became a rallying cry to all who fought in the First World War. I will now read the poem entitled, In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark the place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly scarce heard among the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved, and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Poppies are the flowers used to symbolize around the world to remember those who died in military service, which is why we are all wearing them today. At this time, if you would, please welcome the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps from Tybee High School. who will be presenting the colors of today's ceremony. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance after the colors.
Thank you, Dr. High School of Junior ROTC. At this time, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Bill Blackburn, and also ask the mayor if you would please come provide the invitation for today's ceremony. One, one quick word, by the way, excuse my voice, but I am very proud of the Tidy Junior ROTC. It is a great group of young people and the leaders, the veterans, they did a great job. Let's bow to prayer. Lord, we stand before you today in front of this war memorial. To read these names is to remember that these were sons of these hills. From Center Point, from Ingram, from Hunt, from out on the Real Ranch, and from much smaller and simpler Curve Hill. But they paid the price. Father, they left behind families, jobs, opportunities, and futures to serve. To serve those that they knew and those of us who have followed. We stand on their shoulders today and we give you great thanks for them. In Christ's name, amen. Another distinguished guest that we have with us today is our county county judge, Judge Rob Kelly. The judge also served in the U.S. Army Reserves as an air defense artillery officer. And at this time, sir, I'd like to ask you to come up and address our attendees. Good morning. Before I start on the welcoming Christ. remarks, I want to give a shout out to the Kirk County Sheriff's Office. For those of you that don't know, they've ordered a terrorist attack at Walmart. We now have a yes. Thank, thanks to the Sheriff, thank you, and keep that in the line, for keeping us safe. But with that, this is my opportunity to welcome you. Yeah, y'all sit down. I'm sorry. That's one thing I learned as a judge. I can't tell you to sit down. <laughs> I want to welcome you to the Kirk County Courthouse. This is your courthouse. Stand here. This, speak up. Okay, let me get a little closer. Okay, good. I want to welcome you to the Kirk County Courthouse. This is your courthouse. This courthouse is almost 100 years old. We've got a few more years, just a couple more years, before we celebrate our centennial anniversary of this building. And I want to welcome you here on this very solemn day. This is Memorial Day. And uh, I come here as uh, not only a veteran, but the son of a veteran. And my wife is also the daughter of a veteran. Uh, World War II Marines in the Pacific, uh, one at Guadalcanal and one at Bougainville. Uh, and as I was thinking about the remarks I would make today, I was thinking back to when I was a kid, and you're learning about what Memorial Day is. And I'm sitting at my grandfather's feet, and he tells me the story of when my uncle Carl died in Europe, and the Western Union man came to the house and my grandmother's tearful loss. This is the day that we remember those who have fallen. On November 11th, we'll be back here to celebrate the rest of us that came home on Veterans Day. But today is a special day and our country recognizes those that fell in service to protect our values, our community and national values. And as I thought about it, uh, in my dad's generation, he and nine other uncles of mine went off to that was 10 total. Nine came home. That's incredible odds of what came home. We were very, very blessed to have that many of them come back. When my dad told me they fell him out in formation before they were getting ready to attack mainland Japan, he said the commandant told him, or the commander told him, look to your left and look to your right. One of you is coming home. That's what would have happened had we invaded Japan. That's what they were predicting. So I feel very blessed to be here. I know my wife feels very blessed to be here uh, to celebrate this with you. But I'm going to invite you to celebrate, celebrate it in a more solemn uh, attitude. The, uh, as I said, today is for those that 
that fell and did not come home. And those names, the people that from Kerr County are inscribed on this wall right here. And those names get read every year. They're gonna be read again this year. Jeff's gonna read the names to you. Uh, and those are the folks, the boys and the girls from Kerr County that went and served and did not come home. But each of you have folks in your life and in your family that may not have been from Kerr County that served and some that didn't come home. Uh, and we remember the ones that didn't come home today. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, invite you as, as I finish up here and we begin this program, to say out loud the name of the ones that you come here to remember today. And even if they came home safely uh, and were able to die a natural death or old age or what have you, to remember who you want here with you in spirit to celebrate our fallen heroes. And so with that, I will begin. I remember my uncle that didn't come home, Carl. Carol Kelly. Please repeat whoever you would like to remember today. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I'm glad I don't have a whole lot more to do before we uh, have our guest speaker come up because this. Uh, tears me up. Today's keynote speaker is Colonel Jack Luzma. Colonel Jack Luzma is the United States Marine Corps. He's an aeronautical engineer. He was an officer in the United States Marine Corps for 25 years. He was a jet attack pilot, reconnaissance pilot. Then he went on to be every little boy and girl's dream. He became a NASA astronaut. 1966, Jack served as a member of the astronaut support crews for the Apollo 9, 10, and 13 missions. He was pilot of the Skylab 3 space station mission for 59 days in 1973. He spent 11 hours on two spacewalks while he was with Skylab. He was also the backup docking module pilot for the Apollo Soyuz test project mission, which was also the first joint space flight the Soviet Union in 1975. March of 1982, Jack was spacecraft commander of STS-3, third orbit, orbital flight of the Space Shuttle Columbia. It was an eight-day mission. It was the only shuttle to ever land on lake bed of White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. Jack has logged 7,100 flight hours of flight time including an amazing 1,619 hours in space. Jack and Gracia moved to Kerrville in 2014. They've been married for 65 years, have four children, 17 grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, and most of all, they all live in Texas. At this time, Colonel, will you please come forward? introduction and uh, glad you introduced my wife. She's right here with me today as she always has been in 65 years and uh, you uh, understand that we have a lot of grandkids and um, we also uh, have spent uh, 25 years in Texas ourselves, although we're not Texans, but we have spent that time not only in Kerrville but also in Beeville Houston area, of course, and uh, we thank all of you for your hospitality, and we you know, thank you for your forgiveness that we're not real Texans, they're still the Yankees, but uh, you're going to have to uh, endure this today because uh, uh, I've been invited. It's great to see this great crowd. Uh, we're assembled here, of course, uh, on this special day, but I want to thank you for the opportunity to make this address. The uh, military community is very active and recognized here in uh, Kerrville with the Veterans Hospital and the courthouse here. 
memorial in uh, several military associations. And uh, streets named after Sidney Baker and Earl Garrett and, and Francisco Limas as well. Uh, we drive by the uh, cemetery, National State Cemetery, every day. And Old Glory waves there all day, 24 hours a day, and is properly lighted during the hours of darkness. And the grounds are neatly trimmed around the 500 or so uh, white headstones, which are decorated this morning, each with a flag at, at the headstone. So uh, Kerrville is a patriotic city and a leader in recognizing and promoting the virtues of personal military service. So uh, that being said, I'd like to um, uh, just uh, bring you a Memorial Day message today. And uh, that's why we're assembled here on this day to set aside to pay tribute to those who served our country in the military service and who also paid the ultimate price for our freedom and for the preservation of uh, ideals that we enjoy as Americans. I was only five years old and America was attacked by the uh, Japanese at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941 to initiate our nation's engagement in World War II. At that time, every able-bodied male, 18 years old and older, without a good reason for not serving in the war, either enlisted in the service of his choice or was drafted into the military service. Women also volunteered and served as nurses, war plant uh, workers, administrators, and other positions vacated by the men who went to war. Nearly everyone in America was somehow involved in World War II, as opposed to now when only about 1% of our population is involved in military type activities. My father was uh, working in an auto parts manufacturing plant in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan when the war began. He was almost deaf. So when he tried to enlist in the military in 1941, he was rejected. But wanting to serve his country somehow, he took a job as a riveter on the wings of B-24 Liberator bombers that were built in a converted Ford automobile plant. Henry Ford was an early inventor of the assembly line uh, method of uh, production, of rapid manufacturing processes and techniques. In about four years, they built almost 9,000 bombers, and at sometimes at the rate of one per hour. And uh, by the way, this was also the home base of Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> My father commuted uh, 125 miles each way between our home and at the, in the bomber plant on weekends for a year, about 125 miles. And um, then he moved our family to Ann Arbor, Michigan, near the bomber plant. We lived in my uncle's upstairs room for a long time, early in the war. Their uh, two older sons, my cousins, became military pilots, one in the Army Air Corps, it was then called, and the other in the Navy. I admired them greatly. And uh, was, as was the custom, my uncle and aunt displayed proudly and patriotically a small white banner in the uh, front window with two blue stars, one for each of their sons in the service. One day, one of those uh, two blue stars turned to gold when the Air Corps pilot was killed. I vividly remember and recall the uh, prolonged grief and sorrow that brought to our whole household, but I also remember the pride and the resolve and the determination as the whole nation, all of America, gathered together in population and pulled together in unity to support our country and to assist the war effort with rationing of gasoline and tires and butter and cans or sugar and sugar and other commodities. And how we flattened out our tin cans and put them out on the curb every week for collection and reconstitution of the bullets and guns for our troops. There were also frequent air raid drills in our communities and schools. And at school as a uh, first and second grader, I could buy war bonds in school. So we would uh, bring our dimes and quarters uh, to school regularly and paste, buy stamps with them and paste them into our war bond booklet until we had $18.75 saved up. And that was going to buy us a war bond for $25 in 10 years. Perhaps some of you had that same experience. 
but at that time Americans were defined by their patriotism and almost everyone uh, was connected to the war effort somehow. Like all wars, World War II was very costly. Here are a few facts uh, for perspective. In less than four years, 12 and a half million Americans served on active duty. During that time, 100,000 American troops were killed per year, over 400,000 in total for World War II. About three times that many were wounded. In the Battle of Iwo Jima, for example, an enemy held island that uh, interfered with our aviation access to the Japanese mainland. We lost nearly 6,000 Marines during a period of only five weeks, about 170 per day. So there is no gift so great as the a gift of life, and no sacrifice so noble as to be willing to relinquish that gift so that others might live. And yet this was the risk that our comrades in arms accepted as a fact of life. Their zest for life was as great as our own. Their desire to live and their respect for life was heightened by the ever-present specter of death, and yet they served. They did not shrink when duty called. They did not excuse themselves with weak excuses or philosophies. They did not run and hide or let others take their place. They served, but they were just regular folks like you and me. They, most of them came in their youth, but the military draft was seldom a respecter of age or of personal circumstance. But torn from home and family, from stability and safety, from comfort and career, they served not for wealth or fame or power, but with an inherent sense of duty to a way of life, an ideal, a principle, our heritage. They served for us and for millions still unborn in America and in nations around the world where the bells of freedom and, and self-determinant thought to ring. Sometimes they were vilified by those who they real, that fail to realize that military people don't start wars, they fight them. That those who carry the rifles wish more for peace than do their critics. Who wants peace more than those who are dodging bullets and bombs and missiles in some far off land and living in foxholes and bunkers while ironically their sacrifices are being trampled in the safety and comfort of home by the same critics whose rights they're protecting. They were an uncommon lot with much in common. Most of all in common was their pride in being known as patriots. And that is how they would wish to be remembered today in this place. They were mostly boys who matured into men before their time. Yet theirs was not to reason why. Theirs was to answer the call of duty, to bear arms for the defense and preservation of our most sacred heritage of freedom liberty, justice, and right. Today, we veterans tend to minimize our own service and deference to those we cannot share this, who cannot share this day with us, who died in America's battles and, or in preparations for them. They were the backbone of America's strength and her projection of influence and order. Their names are written in history on stone markers, wooden crosses and monuments, walls and plaques, cemeteries and churches, in parks and schools across our country and around the world. They came back home draped in a flag. Others rest in foreign soil. Still others can only be a memory recorded within us for they were never found. Their picture on the wall, a gold star on a banner in the window, a newspaper clipping, just a memory in the heart. For some of you who join us here today, those who died were your relatives or your pals or your buddies. You depended on each other for strength and courage, and for mutual aid and protection. You returned to live and work among us in schools and factories, in stores and offices and homes next door or down the street. You don't talk about it much because it's hard to explain, or it's preferred to be forgotten. And most people don't really comprehend 
the inside story of war, although some try. But freedom is our birthright as Americans. We're free to choose our course, to set our standards, and to pursue our goals. We can worship the God of our fathers freely and without prejudice, just as he and we intended. We're free to speak our minds and to express our thoughts in the public debate. We're free to come and go, to rest, or to rest or work, to lead or follow. We have so much freedom that we would not know how to live without it. And we find it hard to relate to those who do live under constant tyranny. We take our freedom for granted, but freedom is not free. It was bought with a terrible price and will be maintained only with constant vigilance, both from within as well as from without. And freedom will only be good as long as we teach and live the principles, values, and character that typified America in its rise to world leadership, and which especially characterizes those who we remember today. The military fighters that we salute today have not only purchased our right to be free, but they also preserved and protected our rights of self-determination, of justice under the rule of law, and all the fundamental privileges to, privileges to uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And though we often hear complaints, we only have to travel abroad to know how good we have it here, to sense the oppression in lands where freedom has been until only recently just a dream, where individual rights are denied. Ask the Eastern European nations before the Iron Curtain came down, decades after the World War II, and you will be reminded of what liberty meant after the fall of communism in their lands. Ask that question in oppressed lands around the good earth, and then we will know what freedom means, and our hearts will swell with thanksgiving every time we return to America's shores. No other country has achieved so much in so little time in the standard of living, quality of life, preservation of human values and individual rights, and in producing its plenty and conquering disease, and providing opportunity and security, a place to live, a car to drive, food to eat, a job to work, a way to learn, and a land to enjoy. But the building of America was done neither by the faint-hearted nor the doomsayers, nor by the ungrateful or thoughtless, nor by the complainers or sitters, but rather by those who lived and worked by sweat and risk, by ambition and pride, and by dedication and vision. And it was heard over and over and over again by those who we remember on this special day. So let their sacrifices not be in vain and their legacy not be wasted. This legacy is one of freedom and justice, of opportunity and security, of rights and values, of inspiration and patriotism, and of pride in being an American. If they had it to do over again, they would. And if they could express their wish to us today, or leave a word of advice, they would tell us to carry on, stay the course, to not allow the price they pay to be in vain. They would have us issue a warning against complacency and to combat apathy in new generations. They would tell each of us to hold the lessons of history alive, to keep them burning before the eyes of our youth. They would exhort us to maintain that same position of peace through strength, the military strength that overthrew the domination of communism so that America will never have a weakness that motivates an adversary to challenge our capacity and will to prevail. They would also want us to know that the enemy that attacks America's founding principles from within is more subtle but just as dangerous as the enemies they fought outside our borders. For today, America is experiencing an ever-widening breach in its moral fiber. As a result, we are reeling from the deterioration of our national values and family unit, the building blocks of the foundation of our society. This negligence in the home and the vagaries of the permissive philosophy have produced waves of violence and crime, devaluation of human life, substance abuse, sexual misconduct, pornography, and other social ills that can free us more 
confront us more blatantly every day. So let us renew our pledge to America today and to her ideals. Those ideals began about 500 years ago when pilgrims seeking religious freedom arrived on our shores. They established 13 colonies founded and chartered on Christian precepts with the Bible as their book of statutes. In the following century, eight major universities were founded on biblical principles, but they no longer hold, unfortunately, to their original religious affirmations. On a more military note, chaplains are now limited by the federal religious police. Faith-based words or actions can get you punished, reassigned, or dismissed from military duty. Such leadership failures are also affecting civilian positions and governance. Kerrville, on the other hand, is a faith-based community listing 40 or 50 church groups in the Yellow Pages. So it's time to take a united stand against federal government practices becoming more dismissive of faith-based individuals and our initiatives and our organizations every day. Despite this, let us thank God of our fathers for our freedom and for those who died to maintain it. Let the memories of those that we honor today burn brightly and continuously before us. Speak out to our rising generations about heroism and courage and valor. Let us impart to them the sense of duty and national pride that characterize those who perished while serving our nation and that inspires we who live so that Americans may continue to live in freedom and security in this land of plenty. We should live before our youth as our fallen heroes who want us to live in truth and forthrightness, setting the examples we want them to follow, teaching them to stand tall and resolute in the storm, but humble in victory, to mature in both personal and professional accountability and integrity, and to know that no one in our free society, no matter how highly placed on the pedestal of public service, is especially anointed to operate outside the codes of common decency and conduct. And that the greater the public trust, the higher that standard that trust requires. Let us teach them to know when to follow, but how to lead, how to extend compassion, to uphold the codes of human dignity, and to have faith in God and the spiritual qualities that made America great. Let us develop patriots in our midst, and rekindle a spirit of national pride and patriotism in ourselves in our youth so that future generations may possess the national will and resolve to defend America's principles at home and abroad, thereby conveying the message of President John F. Kennedy when he said, and I quote, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, and oppose any foe to assure the survival and success of liberty." Unquote. This is the legacy that those who fought and died for our freedom would have us maintain and project. So today, and every day, let us give thanks for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And may those whose memory depends on us to perpetuate as their legacy find us faithful to that charge and may they rest in the assurance that we will not forsake that sacred trust god bless america Thank you, Colonel. It's going to be hard to continue after I have to uh, follow that, sir. As Judge Kelly said in the beginning, we're going to read the names of our Kerr County heroes that have gone on before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice. World War I, Sidney Baker. Eddie Burleson, Edmund Cadal, 
J.A. Cowden. Randolph Davis. Leonard Denton. Monroe Dowdy. Albert Feller. Lewis Floyd. Victor Earl Garrett. Grover Holloman. Randolph Johansson. Edwin Kaiser. Jeff Lavelle. Francisco Lemos. Harvey Merritt. William M. Reeves. Robert Spicer. And George Wells. Our heroes from World War II. Sardio Aguirre, Dempsey E. Ballard, Jimmy Bedingfield, Kenneth Bradley, Clarence R. Busby, Willis Carlisle, Pete Castillo, Dale Kreider, L.T. Davis, Jr. Benefacio de la Cruz. Chaz Dozier. Charles Foster. Sam Fuller. Paul W. Grona. John Harris. John J. Hurd. Gilbert Juarez, Conrad Lawrence, Otis Lee, Albert Locke Jr., Kenneth Lawrence, William H. McGuire, Howard S. Marlar. John D. Masters, William H. Maverick, Hollis O. McDonald, Cyrus W. Miller, Charles H. Nichols, Ben O'Brien, Homer O. Pelton, Ivy Reese, Jr., Emmett D. Roden, Eugene S. Ridgeway, Leon Ritz, Charles Rose, J.D. Rose, Cruz F. Sandoval, William S. Sham. Frank D. Sheffield, Jr. James E. Staling. Raymond Stone. Charles E. Todd. Alvin Vetter. <coughs> Alfred M. Villarreal. G. Warren Wiggins. Ted Warple. Lyle Zachary, Ben Zimwalt, our heroes from the Korean conflict, Korean War, James E. Chenault, Edward Dishinger Jr., Leon W. Pollard Jr., Billy Joe Butler, Rex Aubrey Rayford, the Vietnam War, Robert G. Chenault, Curtis C. Dees, 
Manuel R. Denton, Lawrence L. Dwyer, Jr., Dwayne A. Johnson, Anthony E. Coons, Richard B. Lozano, William C. Nedekin, Michael Fufer, Ronald H. Fufer, Paul W. Riley, Marshall W. Williams, From the Global War on Terrorism and Operation Security Freedom, my friend, Corporal Jacob Light, United States Marine Corps, <clears throat> Operation Iraqi Freedom, Lawrence D. Azell. Cody J. Orr. That's why we're here today, ladies and gentlemen, to honor our heroes. At this time, we will have our reflaming ceremony. Kirk County wants to honor our fallen heroes with a leaf, leaf wreath laying ceremony. Excuse me. When I call your organization's name, please come up to the memorial and hold your wreath. the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. The Republican Women of Kerr County. The Sons of the American Revolution. Scots of Texas Hill Country, Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary, La Femme's Veterans Organization, Forty Eight Veterans Organization, Our Hill Country Retired School Employees. the sons of Confederate veterans, our American Legion, our American Legion Auxiliary, sons of the American Legion, Our Kerr County Historical Association. The Kerr County Patriots Club. Together with Hill Country Veterans. The Military Order of the Purple Heart. Our Kerr County Women's Chamber. Salvation Army. The Military Order of the World Wars. The Kerr County Democratic Party. 
Girl Scout Troop 224. Kerr County. Our very own Kerr County Veterans Service Office. An ambulance post, 1,000. Corporal Jacob Seedlight Memorial. <clears throat> the Hill Country Honor Guard, led by Commander Arnold Rathke, United States Navy, will provide us with three volleys. The three volleys re represent the three words of duty, honor, and country. Taps is only 24 notes, but whose clear, sad tones conjure up memories of the lost loved ones. It does instill hope. It brings comfort and peace to the families, the communities, and all of those who have served with honor. Lieutenant Colonel George Eichner, United States Air Force retired, will be playing taps following the volleys. Once again, I'd like to call Mayor Blackburn. If you would, please give us a benediction. Father, in the spirit of this service, and in the spirit of the message we heard from Colonel Lozman, may we recognize that we are stewards of the freedoms and opportunities of those who died in service and provided for us so that we might live with a strong sense of patriotism and service and commitment to others. Lord, may we see this community grow stronger in faith and stronger for all its citizens. That's a way we can honor these. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'd like to personally thank everyone who participated in today's event. There's nothing more noble than risking your life for your country. Let us honor the memory of heroes who are no longer with us. And let us strive to live up to the example set by each selfish patriot day to day. We were gonna close on one remark but I don't think one is good enough. Greater love 
hath no man than this, that may lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15, verse 13. Joseph Campbell said, a hero is someone who has given their life to something much bigger than oneself. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. And that is an unknown quote. Again, thank you all for being here today. God bless our troops, our leaders, and God bless America. Yeah.